Good evening, could you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen's meeting September 19th. First thing we'll have is public comment period. Corrine Baker, 244 Exeter Road. Um, I'm here to um, bring up some things about this property at 230 Exeter Road. I thought that it was going to be on the agenda for tonight. Is that under new business or old business, do you know? It's it was for a tax abatement? That was last week. It was last week's? Yes. <laughs> and what did you do? Um, there's nothing we can do until he actually... Uh, moves forward with his building permit and stuff because so, the, the uh, coming out of current use can't do that until that happens. Okay. But actually, they're only taking, they're leaving 12 acres in current use, which is the part that's going to the town. Uh, it's not being left in current use, it's being turned over to the town. Yeah, but it's still it in current use. Current, it's still in it's current, still current use. use. It's 12, okay. 12 yeah. acres. Right. right. So yeah. that wouldn't really, that wouldn't be taxed. Right. Okay, so um, how do I find out when the next hearing is on that? Do I get a notification? Because I have been from the planning board and the zoning board whenever they have anything on this property. There would be no notification due. No. It's just coming out of current use. No so notification. But I thought it was um, a tax abatement. This, that doesn't affect. <coughs> no. It's just a town. Right. It's not a butters. Right. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Week late. Oh, I wanted to comment, Phil, on his um, comments about the water issue. Um, several weeks ago, you brought up the, the point that we should be watching our water usage. And I'm looking at the California uh, predicament and thinking they, you know, they came up, up too late. And um, it's nice to know that we're on top of it. We need to keep on top of it. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Good evening again. Uh, we're here to have a few comments on the trucking issue on Mary Batch. All in town here, would you rather wait for the old business? No, no, that would come up. If you got a comment, it would come because we don't have it. It'd be now's your time to okay. speak during public comment. Okay, um, I'm Laurie Haas. I'm trying to find out not sure I'm assuming you got my email last week um, and the it has not gotten any better at all if anything it's getting gotten worse we have haulers coming down now Cisco trucks they're not going to FOSS um, haven't really seen a lot of police activity whatsoever um, Chief Sawyer was supposed to set up a meeting with any residents from Mary Batchelder and Foss, Bill Cummings. We spoke to Bill Cummings either Thursday or Friday. He hasn't heard from the chief at all about anything. The road's getting destroyed. The kids can't ride their bikes. That It's dangerous. We had one just tonight that... Less than 15 minutes ago. Yeah. Blocking the road. Blocking the road. About quarter after five, one came through, got to the corner before he got to Toll Farm, and he was going way too fast, couldn't make the corner, had to stop quick. We thought one of the kids got hit. Now, the chief of police does not seem to be doing anything. Who, who does he report to? His, who is his superior? Who... That's who we need to talk to, apparently. Yeah, and if I, if I may, Mr. Chairman, and, and this is open discussion, it's unusual for a selectman to be engaging during this, um, and, uh, but uh, the chief has, has the statistics and the data that, that he is doing uh, uh, a response, and uh, it is the chief's uh, responsibility, and he has been active on it. He has shared metrics with me, and uh, I'm sure he'll, he'll get uh, those metrics to you. And uh, I'm sympathetic to the uh, um, your continuing plight, and we'll drill back down on it. But uh, I just wanted to say that the chief does have data, does have data on stops, does have uh, uh, 
documentation of his further efforts. And obviously, it's not it's not going as well as uh, as it should be. And we'll work on it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, because I mean, I know I was out there one day, and the truck stopped because I was I was videotaping it to get the license plate. And he stopped, and I said, you know you're not supposed to be on this road. I said, I'm just going to call the police now. He said, go ahead. They're not going to do anything anyway. Well, that's that's hearsay, and, and like you said, this is public comment time. Uh, we don't get in debates during this part of this conversation, so uh, we'll we take it under advisement. On, how can we petition to be on a meeting's agenda? How do you petition? You, um, you give the secretary upstairs a call and ask to be put on the agenda. Okay. And, so that's and also something new they're doing now is if a truck goes either way in our street and there's an oncoming vehicle the other way, now the trucks are going up into people's front lawns to get around because there's not enough room to go. So this problem is just increasingly getting worse and worse by the day. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Seeing none, uh, announcements and community calendar. I don't have anything, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I'd just like to uh, make a, a comment on, on something that I observed last week. Oftentimes we talk about young students and stuff and how they're disrespectful and that. You know, that went at a at a at a sporting event, and when they played the national anthem, every single solitary team that was either practicing or doing anything stopped and removed their hats or helmets and, and you know, saluted the flag. And I, I thought it was very impressive uh, and very respectful of the high school students, really. I mean, something that I've never seen before. It was really good. So I wanted to comment on that. Okay. Phil? Yeah, great comment, Jim. That's one of the uh, greatest uh, learning facilities in the nation. It's an outstanding school, and thanks for sharing that. I have nothing, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we're going to consent agenda, the release of a welfare lien. That's all that's on the consent agenda. Uh, I'll move the uh, release of the welfare lien. I'll second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next one is Christy Pullman. Good evening. I am here with uh, the report for August. Uh, the eighth report of the month, the target is 66.67%. Um, sorry you didn't get these until late on Friday. I missed that I was on the agenda, so I was scrambling to get them done, but you have them. So uh, the to month total income was $597,818. Of that total, motor vehicles came in at 263539 which is over the month's target by $15,539. The other major contributors to the month's total were interest on taxes at $14,029, building permits, at $18,587, uh, state water pollution control at $66,544, departmental income at $57,804, parking lots at $124,312, and the real estate trust at $42,330. Uh, when you compare the revenue to August of 2015, you will find that we are under by $232,966. Um, and I just remind you, again, that's related to that health uh, premium holiday that we got from LGC in 2015. We did not get that this year, and that was for $227,000. So that pretty much makes up the whole difference there. The expense summary shows year-to-date expenses by department. At the end of August, the operating departments without debt service but with open POs were 65.14% of the budget, which is under the month's target by 1.53% or $368,425. The gap continues to close as we finish up the summer season. We'll have a little bit more for September, and then after that we should be on a downward slide, hopefully, slowing things down. In August of 2015, we were at 65.21 spent compared to the 65.14% in 16. Um, overall, the departments as a whole are running under the target of 66.67. And this month, again, I'll just run through what each major section is at. And that this will include um, any open purchase orders that that department has. Uh, executive is at 62.48%. 
election registration and vital statistics is at 61.26. Financial administration is at 58.6%. Legal is at 63.73%. Personnel administration is at 62.27. Planning and zoning is at 66.9, and this is uh, related to the planning department being at 67.4%. General government buildings is at 54.67. Cemeteries is at 64.56. Municipal insurance is at 71.79%. Um, that's caused by the workers' comp and the property liability. Those payments, one is semi-annual and one is annually. So those have all been paid for the year. So that puts that section up a little bit. Parking administration is at 98.03%. Uh, the season is almost over. There's a few events left, I think, for the casino and maybe October Fest. I don't know if they're doing that down there this year. So that's pretty much done. Uh, police department is at 65.55%. Uh, there are two sections over target here, which is support services and police stations and buildings. Fire department is at 65.09. And the two sections over target there are fire suppression and repair services. Building and code inspection is at 60.18%. Uh, emergency management, that's that big one again, but it's 598%, but that's related to the hazard mitigation plan, and we will be getting, uh, we have a grant, and we'll be getting reimbursed for that, so that number will drop. <coughs> Hydrants is at 97.03%. Both payments have been made for the, um, the hydrants for the year. Highways and streets is at 53.36%. Municipal sanitation is at 65.31. Uh, the transfer station and repairs and maintenance are over target in this section. And public works as a whole department is at 60.34%. Animal control is at 63.6. Mosquito control is at 65.82. Welfare is at 62.67. You'll note there that the public assistance rent line is overspent there. So vouchers for rent have been going out more this year than in the past. Culture and recreation is at 60.44%. Maintenance and park section is over target, um, but the parks are should be winding down too with the end of the season. Library is at 66.31. Patriotic purposes remains at 114%. Conservation is at 64.93. Um, at the end, you have the Warren articles that were passed at the town meeting, and those continue to be spent. The 2015 encumbrances are showing that 88% have been expended to date. When you get to the special revenue funds, Fund 24 for the Recreation Department has a balance of 161823 Beach sticker donations year-to-date are 12850 with 16442 being awarded in scholarships. Cable committee uh, fund balance is at $186,005. Private detail fund balance is $115,933. Um, EMS is at $341,026. And the wastewater system development charge, um, in 2016, we've now collected $51,612, and there's a balance in that account of $166,263. And if you look at that report, you'll see that there have been some prod that have been approved but not expended there. And that is all for August. Very good. Questions for Gina? Yeah, I just I just wanted to actually note something. Even though on pages, the fire department and the police department specifically, even though we have gone over in some areas, which, um, you know, it's normal. We just, yeah. we're pretty much finishing up the summer season. And overall, those departments are still under the budget. So absolutely. By at least you might see like over, over time and yeah. salaries really above what they should be right now but overall we're still under budget and we're still in good shape yes we are in good shape yeah sure yeah good report as usual i mean we're right on target right yep. once a month we're we, and you're comfortable with uh, what we have right now for money yep the overage and stuff that the, the emergencies were able to handle yep and um i think great man great report as usual Good. Oh, just on the LGC, can you just explain what that is so people, you know, people might not, the, the health premium that we saved last year, well, so they just years, know what you meant. Yeah, for a few years, um, they were issuing holiday premiums is what they referred to them as, and it, they went back and 
looked, they were calculating their rates in a different fashion that they are doing now. They were kind of calculating them ahead of time. So your percentages, you may have been paying more than what you should have been for your premiums. And so they issued a, hol a premium holiday. Um, but I don't believe, Fred, there's no talk of receiving any more of those right now that PLT's done and all of that, right? That's correct. Yeah. Right, so that's so finished. It's finished. We, won't, we will not see we that. We got it for two or three years, I think we had. Okay, Maybe three, three years. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But that is all done. And, and so next year we won't talk about it. But this year that is what is affecting our revenues. And so that's why I keep pointing that out. Okay. Um, because that's almost all of the difference in revenues right now is related to that holiday premium that we had gotten. Okay. We'll not get. So. And we're still going up in building permits. We're still going up in vehicle registrations. So. Yep, and planning is planning. another one that's been going up. Fire permits. Those are the four that I've really noticed this year. Even fire permits and planning um, as a whole, their amounts are a lot lower, so we don't talk about it. But they used to be budgeted at like 4000 and now they're up to like 19000 Okay. Um, in the planning department. So that just goes to show along. It goes in hand with the building permits. There's growth in the town. It's just that the... Their dollar values are so minimal, we don't tend to look at them as much, but they right. have grown a lot, too. Right. So at some time, though, we got to make sure we're planning ahead, and right. we know that sometime that's going to not go as much. Absolutely. Right. Thank you very much. Phil. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Director, great report, and it, it speaks to uh, how tight the numbers are uh, and how uh, great the leadership is at the department head level uh, that stays within budget. That uh, uh, pinches the penny and really does a remarkable job. There are many uh, communities in this country, certainly throughout the world, that cannot self-govern, and uh, I am continually impressed by uh, uh, the people's government here in Hampton. And your numbers reflect that deeper sense of uh, commitment to uh, excellence in providing municipal service, and you're doing a great job. Thank you. We're all set. <clears throat> Thank you. Great. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. <laughs> Town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, I want to call the board's and the town's attention to a problem we're having. Certain dog owners have been dumping their dog waste in drainage catch basins. The act by itself is a violation of both state and federal laws. The drainage basins do drain to bodies of water. We will shortly receive our MS-64 instructions, uh, our MS-4 instructions, um, on testing these facilities and reporting those tests to the state and federal agencies. The dumping activities will place the town in non-compliance with the current laws requiring the town to clean and test these facilities at, at the potential cost of thousands of dollars in taxpayers' funds per facility. That's a lot of money considering we have several hundred uh, outfalls in the town. If you see someone dumping into a drain catch basin, or a wetland or a body of water. Please report them or her to the Department of Public Works and the Police Department. It's an opportunity for you to save yourself and the community from increased taxes because of a very few. And let me say that um, part of the problem was on West Ridge Road, we found a catch basin that was literally full of dog waste. Uh, and when we inspected the outfall, the outfall was covered with dog waste that had worked its way down through the system. Um, we also have encountered it down on Coal, Coal Street, down the beach, uh, and we had reports today that this is spreading uh, up on Francone, or Francone uh, area of the of the upper upper town. So it's getting to be a problem. Um, and once we're in non-compliance, the test regiments under the under the MS reporting requirements of the federal government go up and ratchet up rather quickly to the point where we have to clean and, and retest and clean and retest and clean and retest. And that could cost the taxpayers of this town thousands and thousands of dollars extra for something that shouldn't have to happen. So if you've got dog waste, you need to get rid of it, it should go in with your trash. They'll pick it up with your trash, put it in a plastic bag, your regular trash bag, and it will go to the landfill, which is where it belongs. Uh, dogs do carry certain parasites that are not good for the solid waste system um, and for the, excuse me, for the, uh, the sanitary sewer system. So don't dump dog waste and flush it down the toilet because they do carry parasites that are dangerous. Uh, item number two, the police department is in process of having the replacement security system installed as was previously approved by this board. The work should be accomplished within the next few weeks. So we're actually doing the installation now. 
We are currently reviewing all the condominium documents for each condominium within the town of Hampton to determine what facilities are responsible for their own solid waste removal. We are currently about 50% completed. Once the review is accomplished, we will have it reviewed by the Department of Public Works to ensure that the list is correct and uh, versus the number of places that we are picking up. Uh, following DPW review, the list will be provided to the board for their review so we know what's really, 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 really happening for a change. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Any questions for the town manager? Jana? I don't have anything. Fred, do we have a town ordinance where we can find somebody if they're dumping into the uh, drainage system? We don't, but the federal government does, and it's $125,000 a day is the penalty if they're caught and, and pro prosecuted by the federal government. And that can happen. These things all discharge, in the case of Hampton, they discharge to the, the river or the harbor, and uh, they're in violation of the state shellfish laws. They do it does contaminate the shellfish beds. So that we need to be very careful because people ingest the fish that's caught there and they ingest the shellfish that's caught there. Um, and it can be dangerous for them to do that. It would be incumbent on people to, if they see somebody doing it, to say something to them? Absolutely, and report them, please. And report because them? we're going to have to clean that basin. Okay, yeah. But I mean, if you see somebody doing it, say something. Maybe people are unaware of it. Maybe they're not watching. But, I mean, you should be aware of it, but if they're not, people should say something and, and absolutely report them. Um, that's it for me. Okay. Oh, nothing, sir. Thank you. Uh, Jim brings up a good point. Should we have a town ordinance specifically for We can. Them? We can have one. That should be something that we might want to do. Yeah, put it as part of our public works drain ordinance. Absolutely. Yeah. So we'll work up something and present to the board. Okay. I see nothing under old business. Anybody got anything under old business? Anything under new business? Closing comments. Short meeting. Well, yeah. we have a... Chairman, uh, before you adjourn, I would appreciate the board making a motion under RSA 91 hyphen capital A colon 3 Roman 2 small e litigation for a non-public session by a roll call vote. Make that motion. Motion made by Jim, seconded by Regina. All those in favor? Phil? E. Yep. Thank you. So, do we need a motion to adjourn? Uh, you would adjourn at that point after the uh, Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Well, I'll sign you tonight. <laughs>